our next talk is by Pierre Antoine, uh, and uh, Pierre Antoine will talk uh, will talk to us about using Nix in the environment of uh, high performance computing. Right. Right. Yes. So take it away and uh, give a warm applause and welcome to Pierre Antoine. Thank you. Um, so I'm Pierre Antoine Boutier. Uh, as you may hear, I'm French, so I'm terrible uh, at speaking English. Also, um, I'm coming from applied mathematics and numerical computing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and um, so I'm terrible at uh, writing in functional language and uh, administrating. Um, system. So, uh, given those statements, I've decided to, to talk about how we administrate software environment on our HPC clusters with uh, tools uh, written in functional languages. Right. Uh, who are we? Um, so, GRICAD is a public entity in France, in Grenoble, more precisely, in Grenoble. And um, among other services, we provide computer, computing power and efficient storage solutions uh, via distributed file systems for all Grenoble researchers. We have two main clusters, uh, an HPC high performance computing cluster named Froggy and a more data analysis oriented cluster named Luke. Yes, as in Luke Skywalker. Um, so first, what is a HPC cluster? Uh, very, very briefly, maybe some of you uh, know nothing about uh, high performance computing, but basically it's um, a cluster is a set of interconnected Linux computing nodes, uh, a node uh, as a CPU, memory, uh, graphic cards, and one or several head nodes sharing some common network file systems. Uh, the users will access uh, to the cluster through SSH and he will connect uh, him himself on the head nodes. And launch, he launch a simulation from the head nodes on the computing nodes. So we have two clusters. The first one is Froggy. It's a HPC oriented cluster. It has many CPU, many memory. Um, he has a performance uh, computing network between computing nodes, which is uh, very important for us uh, in the case of the HPC. And uh, yes, we can say it's, uh, it has a direct leaking cooling system, which is nice. And um, it's dedicated to simulations that need a lot of communication between nodes. Uh, so. Uh, typically, the, the, the code that runs on that run on on this uh, cluster are parallelized in uh, distributed memory uh, with MPI libraries. Classically, the uh, the second cluster, main cluster, because we have other smaller or older or not in production clusters, um, is called Luke. is a bit different from Froggy because it's a heterogeneous cluster. It has nodes that are different, uh, need different number of uh, cores, of memory, of size. Um, researchers can buy nodes and we take care of these nodes. We plug in, in our, uh, our, uh, our machine in Luke and we, we, take, uh, we, we do the maintenance of these nodes, etc., etc. Memory size between uh, 24 and 512 gigabytes, depending on, on nodes. This kind of cluster is more adapted for a larger range of uses, batch simulation, experimentation, shared memory parallelization. And above all those clusters, these two but a bit more clusters, um, all the GRICAD computing platforms are integrated into a local grid that aims at optimizing the resource usages. In other terms, users can launch a batch of the through the grid on the unused resources of our platform. Um, just a graph to, to explain briefly. Uh, we have several clusters. Each cluster has the same uh, batch carrier, which is WAR um, for us, uh, similar to PBS or SLOM for, for those who know. And uh, with the grid, uh, the user can launch simulation on all 
uh, you need resources on this different platform. So, and the software environment among all these clusters, um, we have some specificities in our environment. We have uh, heterogeneous users, different scientific fields. We address all the, the whole community, uh, research communities in Grenoble. So we have uh, high energy physicists, uh, geophysicians, biologists, economists, etc., etc. We have users that are noob, in IT, and also we have power user, advanced user, better than me. We have different use cases, batch. Uh, we have code MPL millions of code ready. Uh, we have whole softwares in Fortran 77. We have uh, Python 3.6 uh, with a lot of dependency in, uh, in low level languages, etc., etc. And free versus and free software. We have MATLAB, for example, hi hat MATLAB, uh, etc. Uh, user have different requirements, um, performance for some of them, uh, more human friendly uh, access to the machine and to the simulation, uh, reproducibility obviously for the research, portability, etc., etc. Also, another issue: say we have different cluster with different hardware characteristic and different operating system and different physical hosting which can cause network issue. So can we hope to enter relevantly to everyone needs with our resources? Uh, how did we in the past, um, we use the module command. Uh, it's a software which is in use in lots of computing center uh, today. Um, the system administrator compiles softwares and libraries uh, that have been needed by the, the researcher on each cluster and after that user can load uh, the software via the module commands. Module load open form, module load MATLAB, for example. Problem for each software for each version, this admin has to compile everything that is needed that work needed to be done on each cluster and no portability and no, no reproducibility guaranteed at all uh, from a cluster to another. No sharing of the work done from one module, obviously. No module cannot be uh, used on a, a laptop, on a desktop of the researchers. So why Nix uh, now a cluster? Um, because for this point, uh, for maintenance, functional package manager, no side effects, which is cool for us. Um, package creation and installation without root privileges, which is crucial for us uh, as uh, cluster administrators. Also, reproducibility and reliability, uh, I have said sooner, crucial for research. Uh, portability, obviously. Uh, researchers can work on their laptop and install the same environment on the cluster and uh, they are happy with that, very happy. And finally, one channel and binary cache for many cluster, the job is done once for all. We have some specificities that are well covered by Nix. Uh, we are heavily multi-users. Um, we can integrate custom community private packages in our cha channel. Um, we can handle uh, many build options uh, because we have church, uh, researchers are mm, asked often to compile this code with this version of this in, uh, of Intel compiler, this version of this uh, MPI libraries. Um, her, her itself compiled with this version of this Intel compiler, etc., etc. Uh, we call that the combinatorial nightmare in terms of uh, of uh, version of the of the software we have on the cluster. And finally, we want a system that is operating system independent. So, um, uh, cherry on the cake. Uh, many Nix packages already exist. We are very happy. So Nix seems totally appropriate for us. So now our Nix setup, uh, it's uh, more or less classic. Um, so we have our cluster with a common distributed storage. Um, we set up our channel through a web server. 
we have the binary cache and the Greek channel, uh, and the user can access to them from the both cluster. Uh, the next store, the next directory shared on all the head and computing node on each cluster. We set up a mount uh, on the NFS file system on all of your of our, of your node, of our nodes. So um, the main steps to install Nix on one cluster, Nix, Nix tools. Uh, so I'm not an expert at all about this pa that part, but you can answer questions about that. Uh, I won't answer, I think. Um, install Nix tool as a module. Yes, Nix and module commands can can coexist easily, and um, it's uh, it's necessary for us for now. Set up the Nix da daemon, and uh, the user when he, uh, he, he connects uh, to to the cluster. Uh, he have to source the script. So this script sets the path to the Nix tool binaries. It sets the Nix path variable. It initializes per user directories and configuration file. It sets the Nix remote variable that is necessary to use Nix daemon. Um, then the si Simon channel. Simon is uh, another name for the Greek at computing uh, center. Um, it's a copy of Nix PKGS table channel plus some package, for example, Intel compilers or research codes uh, that can go possibly upstream. In fact, uh, some of them have gone upstream already. We have a short binary cache, as I already said, and currently we have ten, uh, 17 packages without uh, counting those uh, who have go which have gone up upstream. So our workflow to sum up, but I'll, I have uh, already uh, said all of that. Um, so the cluster, you have head nodes, which with the Nix daemon on on, the, on it. Uh, we have the web, ser the web server with the binary cache and the channel. Uh, the admin or power user can contribute to the channel. And sometimes when we have tested our code on our uh, cluster, uh, we do pull request upstream. So some feedbacks now. Um, after our experiments, uh, which have begun two years ago, approximately, um, yes, reproducible and reliable is crucial for us, but uh, it's it's a fact. So we are very happy with that. Users can install their packages or packages by themselves. It's portable, it's a bit which is very important um, for users and for us too to, to do tests. For the most common package, uh, I, um, I mean for the package that users use a lot, uh, with a short binary cache, very quick installation, um, we are happy to contribute uh, to our living communities, uh, the Nix community, but also we are happy to have a living community that, that uh, have a good documentation, a lot of packages, uh, lots of issues, bad answer to these issues also. And um, finally, uh, our main issue at, at, uh, at the beginning was uh, to install an, an identical software environment easily on different platform. And, uh, and it's the case now, it's no more tedious. So the cons, more or less, um, I think it's not really cons, it's uh, more a matter of time, I think. But as it was said yesterday, the, learning, the language uh, learning, learning curve is steep um, for us at first, but especially for IT beginners, um, our uh, users. In fact, uh, most of our users do, no, do, do not create their packages. We have to do that, but uh, we are not so many to do that. For some language, the solution for packaging or setting up an environment can be confusing for users, especially for Python. Some packages are tricky to write, um, and researchers for a particular software may need a lot of different configurations. So uh, packages as configurations, as, it as uh, presented yesterday morning, um, we are waiting with a lot of enthusiasm about that feature. 
Um, finally, I think changing things properly, especially in IT, in the public research, takes a lot of time. Thank you for your attention. Well, didn't I? Um, so, <laughs> I'm sorry. Are there any questions? Yes. Do you have to do a lot of manual patching for some of the HPC specific applications that haven't been packaged for Nix yet, like uh, having to alter the R path and stuff in them in ways that you wouldn't normally do in a normal package? Uh, patching the application? Um, not so much. Uh, it happened, but not so much yet. But I have I have a bunch of package to do, and I think uh, I will do that for some of them. But we try to avoid that. So in um, your main cluster, you mentioned that you have the head nodes with the uh, next file system, and then you mount the r other nodes over NFS. Yeah. Did you encounter any issues with that? Or? No, sorry. I, I didn't hear. I, I'm curious about the NFS setup. If you yeah. encountered any issues with sharing the next store between Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> ah, yeah. Sometimes in slow, in fact. It, it's a bit slow, so but it's not a, a breaking point for the moment. No, no. So if you have problems with uh, Nix, the Nix store of NFS, says the Nix OS wiki says a uh, paragraph on uh, what you need to do when you're exporting that. Sorry, I didn't see you at the beginning, so I missed uh, totally your question. <laughs> The problem uh, wasn't that a question. If uh, if there was a problem with the next door on NFS, no. Sorry. <laughs> ah, yeah. 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 So there was before a question. Uh, there was a question. Uh, what? Uh, how one can uh, use uh, NFS when it's in, uh, no Nix when it's installed on an NFS? Uh, and there. Yeah. And I think Bruno will answer that because he is this is admin. <laughs> ah, maybe I can answer the question, but no, no. Um, uh, the the sh the NFS sharing is just for read access from the the nodes. You know, the the users are doing uh, Nix operations like like uh, package installation, building, and things like that only from the head nodes, and the the, the computing nodes are just. Uh, accessing to the binaries. The computing node doesn't write in the, uh, in the slash next, in fact. Okay, so it works. <laughs> okay, over. Uh, were you involved in the decision to switch to Nix, and how did that go? Because we're trying to do that at work, too, <laughs> for our HPC. No, uh, I'm here uh, since uh, uh, approximately one year and a half, so no. But uh, Bruno was here, and I think he decided to, to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we do it. <laughs> but in France, uh, we are the... For for now, we are the only computing center uh, using Nix. So the users they can create their own packages. Uh, I saw you have a fork of Nix packages for you. Do so they make their own pull requests to that, or how? Uh, how in work? in fact, yeah, they they include their packages in our channel, and after that, once they have tested, they they do a pull request uh, upstream. 
More questions? Nope. Okay, then thank you very much for your beautiful talk. Thank you.